Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, and I was going to say uh, that's a big part of it uh, when you talk about inflation, because inflation is not just a, a U.S. thing. It's not just a Western world thing. Inflation is like a worldwide thing. So I know when you're talking about putting money under you know, a suitcase, I mean, under the bed or you know, underneath the doghouse in the back, whatever the case may be. Obviously, that the value of that money is going down over time as inflation uh, uh, continues to increase. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's definitely a big part of it. And that's interesting. So you're saying that is that was that with your parents specifically or is that just kind of a cultural thing where, you know, inflation and having that grasp of inflation and, and the effects of it is just kind of not as uh, well understood? Well, I, I could certainly talk. I, I can't talk for a lot of people, but I can certainly speak for myself where where, again, notions of investing and trying to stay ahead of inflation were, were not lessons that I learned. Those were lessons okay. that, that I learned on my own. Right. Uh, so, so, so out of curiosity, and I know we'll kind of get maybe flush this out a little bit more later. So, you know, like you said, first of all, that culture is doing a good job or your culture is doing a good job in terms of not uh, – well, I call them basket weaving degrees, which we'll get into later. But you're going, you know, and that's a lot of times you see Indian people, they're pharmacists, they're engineers, they're some type of doctor or something in the medical field. So that's a big part of it. When you're talking about the first step, acquiring some type of skill that's going to be well paid for years to come. Uh, but then when you're talking about putting away and saving, they're not investing in stock markets and things like that. It's more so just trying to just save it, just, you know, save it as much as possible over the year as you're, as you're earning. Well, so my my parents certainly back in Canada certainly invest in, in mutual funds. Okay. And I think that came I think they realized that towards their retirement, or at least until gotcha. my father retired. So he started investing in mutual funds. But these are default mutual funds from the bank. They're they're really low risk, yeah. uh, low volatility um kind of investments that they're you make maybe a couple of basis points a year on them. Um, it's it, when when looking at these investments, I'm sure my father is just looking at whether or not the interest rate from the mutual fund is higher than the interest rate okay. that they would get from their savings account. Yeah. Right. Um, and my father's really, really old school about it. So he has his mutual fund statement on the fridge um, for everybody to see. I mean, it's just my mom really? at home, but he has it there and like you can take a look at it. And he has six figures in it. But it, and he's had it for decades and it just I mean, the, the basis points on it, maybe like a point and a half, two points. Um, but again, though, that reiterates the fact that that their their appetite for risk is really small. Right. They certainly don't want to. I mean, especially now with them the, towards the the, the the tail end mm -hmm. of their working career, um, they have a nice honey pot with that. They can I mean, their house has been paid off. They bought their house in cash back in 1980. Really? Um, their cars have paid off. They buy Toyota. So they buy Toyota cars that last for a long time. Right. They buy a car once every 15 years. Um, they certainly, I mean, they're East Indian, they're vegetarian. So they're like their, 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 their grocery bills, you know, are not extravagant, maybe a like hundred dollars Canadian a week, if that. Right. Uh, so they certainly spend within their means. Uh, and that just goes to solidify the fact that they are not risk adverse. They're, they're right. operating within their means. They're very comfortable with where they're at right now. They certainly don't worry about money. Um, and they don't have the appetite of, of things like 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 luxury brand goods and, and cars. I mean, my parents, they're, they would rather spend money on a TV and a satellite so they could watch Indian uh, channels from back right. home in India. Um, so I, with everybody, and it's certainly cultural as we were talking about, but, but everybody has a certain appetite when it comes to risk yep. and with, with East Indians and in Asians that migrated over to Canada and North America back in the seventies and eighties, their risk appetite is, is certainly smaller. Um, one thing that I can tell you and that I've empirically ha have identified is that Canadians or Indians that moved to Canada are certainly less risk adverse than those Indians that came to the United States. When the, the United States back in the 70s and 80s, and to a certain extent, the, the, it's the same kind of narrative today. But, you know, you come to the United States and you have that American dream. So you start a business and you buy a house, the white picket fence, and you got your, your ideal four person nuclear family with a, with a daughter and a son and you got your dog. And then you just live life ha happily ever after. And certainly things like population 
um, can, you know, come into the equation of your risk appetite. Because in the in Canada, you only have at that time, you only had maybe 20 million people. And so to create a business, how many people are like, is there is there foot traffic outside of your business? And if so, then you're going to be in a metropolitan area like downtown Toronto or downtown right. Montreal or Vancouver. And so your expenses are going up. And so with that, as your baseline expenses, your operating expenses are up, then that kind of is, is an adverse kind of, of, of notion to, to, to creating a business because you're putting all of this money up front. And so that's risky in and of its own self. But here in the United States, a lot of these Indians that came over during the 70s and 80s, they opened up their own businesses because there's a lot more population here in the United States. There's right. a lot of traffic. Uh, and, and so you'll need like convenience stores is one of those kind of, uh, right. of things that you associate with Indian people and motels are, are other kinds of businesses that, that you uh, affiliate with Indian people. And with motels is a perfect example because in Canada, if you own a motel, again, you have 20 million people, how many people are traveling, how many people are, are moving throughout Canada and, and had the need for a hotel or a motel. But in the United States, there's 300 million people and everybody's trying to travel to another state and see another state. So motels are a lot more lucrative business just because of the population. Right. So so there, there's you have to equate that into the risks. And so in Canada, again, I'll, I'll reiterate that the Canadians, the first generation Indo-Canadians like myself, we were told to go into a business or sorry, to go into an occupation that has. Uh, a high paying annual compensation rate right. so if you're in the United States, maybe your parents at that time came here, bought a business. So then they would teach their kids, you know, how to operate a business, how to find a, a good lucrative market to open a business in.